There's something exciting I wanted to show you. Do you recall um, that we were talking about when you store things in binary, when you store something on the computer, zeros and ones, the zeros and ones have no meaning. They only have meaning when you interpret them in some way. So if you look at a group of eight zeros and ones, you could interpret them as being a character in the alphabet in, in, using, say, ASCII or UTF-8 encoding. Or you could interpret them as being a number between 0 and 255. Or you could interpret them as being a number between negative 128 and positive 127. Or you could interpret them as meaning yes or no, true or false. The interpretation is all. The bits don't carry their own interpretation with them. And I thought to make that really clear, I'd show you a file that's full of bits, which is this bitmap file here. Bitmap file number 32. I'm going to open it with something called a hex editor. And in your lab this week, you're going to fool around with this file. So let me just open it in the hex editor. You see that? This is um, a, so this file here, 33.bmp, is what's called a bitmap file, which is a sort of image. And the reason I've picked it is that you can, under Windows and under Mac and under Linux, it's all easy to view this and all browsers will view this. So it's sort of viewable. It's like the lowest common denominator file that everyone can see. Now, a bitmap file, like any file, on the computer is just a collection of zeros and ones. And for convenience, we normally group them into lumps of eight, zeros and ones. And we call each of those lumps of eight a byte. So this is just a collection of bytes. In a hex editor, hex standing for hexadecimal, it displays the bytes as their, as their numeric value. Numerically, it displays them in hexadecimal rather than characters, which would be what happened if you opened it in a text editor or Word or a notepad or something like that. So this file, 33.bmp, we can see how big it is. It is these thin lines here, if you can see, going top to bottom, they're convenient. They come every four. Um, so that shows us four bunk byte chunks at a time, which, as you know, is 32 bits, which is a common multiple for things on computers. So it's convenient to show four bytes at a time. This very first col column of numbers here just tells us um, what number byte we're up to. So the first byte is 42, and it's at address zero. This is address 20, address 40, address 60, and address 80. Um, now, these addresses are given in decimal, but the values here are given in hexadecimal. So you can see there's 42. But what's 42 in hexadecimal? Well, that's four lots of 16, which is 64, plus two lots of one, uh, two, which equals, that's six, the number 66. And if I highlight it, in fact, because this is a reasonably OK hex editor, it'll actually down the bottom tell me, look, Richard, you're looking at the number 66 in decimal. Um, but the convenient thing about displaying it in hexadecimal is it means every byte just takes up two digits, whereas if I displayed it in decimal, because a byte is a number between 0 and 255, some of them would be three digits wide and some would only be two digits. And if we just rounded everything up to make it three digits wide, then I'd fit heaps less three digits wide because you might have to display 200, say. That's three digits. Two zero zero, and then we'd fit less on the screen. So hexadecimal makes it a bit more packed. All right. So this file, the first byte in it is value forty-two in hex, which is sixty-six. And then there's a whole lot of groups. What, what do you notice about the file just looking at it? Interesting things. There's a lots of sevens in there. What else do you notice about it? Lots of zeros in there. Zeros is. Um, I wonder what it all means. Well, what it all means is nothing. It doesn't mean anything until you interpret it. And the system can interpret it however it chooses. However, if it chooses to interpret this as an image, then we'll get a picture out of it. Now, this was created so if you interpret it as an image, it would give you a valid image. And I'll even show you what the image looks like. It's very beautiful. Uh, where's preview? There we are. There. That's the image we get. Shall we make it bigger? That's as big as we can get. Hmm, it looked a bit like that white pixel we had over there a few minutes ago, didn't it? Okay, so that's our image. It's not very, very big. Uh, how many bytes long is this file? Can anyone see? 
That's 80 there, so that must be 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89. Oh, sorry, it starts with zero, it goes from zero to 89, so it's 90 bytes long. So it's a 90 byte file. Um, so what do all these numbers mean? Well, I've, um, here's something we prepared earlier. I got it from Wikipedia. Here's what a bitmap file looks like. Here's a description of a bitmap file. Uh, da, 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 ignore all this, da, ba, 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 lots of stuff. Da, 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 da. Ah, here's the important thing, the structure of the file. There's a little picture that shows us how it works. And the structure of this file is, first of all, there's going to be something called a header. What's that actually called? It's got a special name because there's a couple of headers here. Bitmap file header. And then after that, there's that green, uh, oh, oh, that green thing is a bitmap file header. Then there's something called a dib header. And then after that, it's going to be the data that stores the image. What's, the, what's this bitmap file header? Well, we see the breakdown here. The, the way they've drawn it, the convention they've used is they've drawn this picture is that the full width across here is four bytes. So signature, you can see, is two bytes. Then it's followed by the file size, which is four bytes. Two reserved things, each of which are one, two bytes each. And then the file offset to the pixel array. And the pixel array is the data at the end, so the address of where the actual image is stored. So let's scroll down. There's lots of guff here. Don't get frightened by it. Just scroll down. Do, 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 do. Bitmap file header is 14 bytes long. And the dib header, well, there's lots of different dib headers. The file I've given you has a dib header of size 40. And then after that, it's a pixel array with all the data. Ba, 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 ba. Let's keep going down. Here we are. OK, here's the data that's in the file. First of all, the first two bytes are the header field. And if we're on a Windows machine and, or various other things, they'll use a BM. They'll put BM there. If you're using OS2, who's using OS2? <laughs> Good man. Which one? Because there's 57 different standards for us too. I think everyone in the world is probably using this standard at the moment, BM. And no, lo and behold, so is this file. Look, 42 is 66. What's the ASCII for 42 hex, 66? What, what character is that? Capital B. In fact, it's displayed on the side over here. And the 4D, what's the, what's the ASCII value for that? M. So literally, it stores a B and an M as the first two characters. So we're looking at this one. So our first two bytes are the B and the M. And because it's an editor, by the way, we could change the file, though this will make it go crazy. I could say, put an N there. N. <laughs> now if we saved it and tried to look at the file, uh, how do I reload the file? File. Maybe I've got to close it and reopen it. Yeah, I think you're right. Oh, I couldn't be opened. Man, it's a corrupted file. Yes, I corrupted it myself. <laughs> so let's put it back. N. Yeah, it's fixed now. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh so close. <laughs> okay, so. Um, Change one of the zero sevens. I like the way you're thinking. I'm talking slowly going through the file formats. You're going, let's just change and see what it looks like. I thoroughly support that attitude. Okay, let's just change some stuff. What do you want to change the zero seven to? <laughs> FF. Oh, what happened there? Oh, I typed FF on this. <laughs> I was on the ASCII side, so I typed the letter F. So it stored the letter F in the file, which happens to have the ASCII code 46. But that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to over here to store the hexadecimal value FF which doesn't have an ASCII, which doesn't correspond to a letter in, uh, in ASCII, so it's just drawing a dot on the other side, saying, I don't know what you're talking about. FF. All right, we put, two F, we put two FFs in there. Let's see what we get now. <gasps> what happened? Do you see? It's got a red blob in it. You, you set it red. You made something red, man. You changed the image. We could, like, do Picasso-style art here. What if I say 66? Oh, I've blown it now. Oh, no. No, no, it worked. I put a blue thing in the middle. Wow, just by changing these values, we can change the file. Now, let's work out what's going on. This is just very quick. And in the lab, you're going to fool around with this file and try and make it some interesting thing here. I'll, I'll leave it for you to make something very beautiful and Picasso-like. Um, OK, so shh, shh. the first two bytes are the header. The next four bytes are the size of the bitmap file in bytes. If I highlight them in my hex editor here, 
oh, the next four bytes, that's one, two, three, four, is the number 90. So that's the size of the file. Woohoo! That was correct. Thank heavens for that. The next two bytes are reserved. The next two bytes are reserved, probably for OS2, so we can skip over them. And then the next four bytes are the offset where the data starts. So we skip to, and we skip to, and the next four give us where the data starts. And that's at address number 54. All right, so let's find 54. Can you probably guess where 54 is? Here, maybe. Let's have a look. 54. Okay, so the this is all the data here. The other stuff between where we were and here is more header information. Data that tells the computer about this image. It tells information such as it stores, it's in the div header now, boop, 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 the 40 byte div header, that's the one we got. The width of the image in pixels, the height of the image in pixels, the number of color planes being used, must be one. <laughs> the number of bits per pixel. Oh, okay, the number of bits per pixel, let's look at that. How many bits are used to represent a pixel? Um, this is stored Four, 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 that's 12, 14. After 14 bytes into the header, that stores the number of bits in a, used to represent each pixel. So where did the header start? Was it here? That was the header, wasn't it? So we go 14. That's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It's there. This, there's 24 uh, bits per pixel. So let's think about it. How do you reckon it stores a color? It's using 24 bits for each pixel to store the color of that pixel. How do you think it's storing the color of a pixel? There's 24 different colors and it puts a one in each of those, yeah. But actually with 24 bits you can store more than 24 colors. Like for example, hello, come in guys, come in and sit down. Like for example with, with five fingers, you can count higher than five. What I meant was each color is a number. Each color is a number? Five yes. Numbers. Each number is a, yeah. So there's two to the 24 possible uh, colors, which is about a million. Well, what can I count up to with five fingers? If you count on your fingers, you can go zero, one, two, three, four, oh. <laughs> five, <laughs> six, <laughs> seven, eight, Nine, and so on. Okay. You can work out probably what I can count up to. So we've got um, these 24 bits here. There's a, they, they store the color of a pixel in a systematic way. You could have just an index into a table and it could just each number being a different color and there's sort of higgledy piggledy. But actually there's a rhyme and reason. Knowing the number, those 24 bits, you can actually guess what the color's going to look like. Yes? They look like three times eight bits. There's three lots of eight bits. That's right. There's in fact three bytes representing each color. And those three bytes each have a different meaning. What do you reckon they are? Red, blue, green. Red, green, and blue. Red, blue, green. I'm not sure what order they're in. We could easily get it wrong. But, but say, for example, if I go to the first pixel here and set it to make that FF, let's see what that does to the image here. It made bright blue. So the first one is blue. What's the next one? Green, do you see that? It made it go green. And the last one is going to be what? Red. That's our remaining color, isn't it? And by mixing red, blue, and green, you can get all the colors of the rainbow. Now, notice the crazy thing is the very first byte, the very first pixel represented by whoop, these, three, these three bytes gave us our first pixel. We just have gone through now setting the red channel, setting the green channel, and setting the blue channel. Notice the first one talks about this pixel down the bottom. It's sort of maybe, if you're like me, imagine that it would start counting from the top. But it starts counting from the bottom, like in Cartesian coordinate geometry. So that's our first pixel, that's our next 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 pixel, that's our next, that's our next. And this one up here is the last one. So let's pull around with the last guy. If we wanted to make it white, how do you make a pixel white? By giving it red, blue, and green? FF. 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 about um, the header files that I've skipped over and I've told you, and you'll see when you scan through this page, that because it's convenient um, for memory purposes 
to always deal in groups of four bytes at a time. In uh, bitmap files, the requirement is that each row of pixels has to start on a four byte boundary, has to start a multiple of four bytes into the thing. Which, if you think about it, means um, there's uh, three pixels on each row. Each pixel takes three bytes, so it takes nine bytes to store a row. But it has to then pad it out to multiple four, so it pads it out to 12 bytes. So the last three bytes in every row just aren't used at all. And that's why it's, um, uh, that's why there's uh, 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 nothing here. We've just filled in the padding bytes for the last, for the first row. So if we want to fill in a real byte and make it white, it's actually in here. And if I save it, and there we go. Does that make sense? So we get, just made the last pixel right. Well done, you guys are like artists. Does anyone have any questions about that? Yeah, what was your question? The last three bytes are padding, so they're ignored, so you can put anything in there. If you were a spy and you had a bitmap image, you know at the end of every column, every row of pixels, round it up to the nearest multiple of 12, so the worst case is three more, like we have here, are extra bytes just sitting there with no information in them. And you could hide your secret message in those three bytes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do that, can we? What message do we want to hide in here? Well, shouldn't we just hide the message in the bitmap Say it again? The bitmap has a file size Oh, yeah, yeah. So you can just add a lot of stuff. You can add stuff at the end of the bitmap. It might not even matter. Let's see. What are we going to type? Um, I like cheese. <laughs> 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 no, no one will ever know. And let's see. It might mark up the file. It might care that the file size is wrong, or it might ignore that. Oh, yes. <laughs> And similarly, you can also put some stuff in the padding. Where was our padding here? This one doesn't mean anything. So even if it is truncated, even if some, because some, somewhere in the process of this file being passed around, someone might notice it doesn't need that and just throw it away. But it'll never get rid of this padding, so we can store uh, H, oh, over here. Type it in that. Type H-A-L. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we've hidden that in the file. It's not going to affect him. Okay. Um, thank you for all those questions. Let's just take a little break. And